playoffs. This should be a great test go. for him here tonight, certainly. Yep. Uh, yes, I agree. Sorry, I'm working on the sound there. I think I just fixed it for you guys out there. Matt Crandall with Chip Crennan. Now, our technical guy is also Chip Crennan, so w if we get mad at Chip for the technical, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But as far as color, he's going to provide it for you tonight, folks. There's no doubt about it. As long as he gets the technical issues figured out, we'll be all right. Talk about the goaltender for Indiana because he's a returner and he led this team last year, not only to first place in the league, Chip, you know this, but all the way to the national championship game where Indiana fell just short, lost in the national championship game, which was a heartbreaker, but the number two team in the nation right here. Yeah, so, wait, uh, Sammy Billis, uh, the junior goaltender, wears the number 30 out of Northbrook, Illinois. Uh, he, he carried the load most of the way for Indiana last year, started in 21 games. They lost in the national semi in the national semifinals. They made it to the final four out. In, oh, the um, semifinals. Yeah, the semifinals. Okay. Iowa uh, lost to UMass in the finals, but they lost to Iowa in the semifinals uh, last year. I think it was it was an overtime too. So they were oh so close. Is so they, Indiana. We're looking at a national final four team from last year. They did have some turnover, but their goaltender returns. Yeah, and that's BG. All, yeah. Two, three new goaltenders this year, some younger defense, but uh, you got some returning veterans, and it's gonna be important for the Falcons to go off to a good start here today. Yeah, returning veterans, you got all four center icemen for the Falcons are not freshmen, so that's something to keep an eye on, so they're all used to playing center ice at the collegiate level, especially uh, junior junior uh, center Luke Kerr uh, played for uh, Sylvania North, or not Northview, uh, St. Francis in, for, in high school, which you're from fairly familiar with um, broadcasting locally in Northwest Ohio, if you do correct. Yeah, and Luke Coor, his senior year, led St. Francis to a state title, scored the state winning goal in that game late in the third. So Luke is a nice addition for the Falcons this year. A real gamer, good to see him out here. Another uh, game changer on his wing, on his left side will be Cole Ferry. He has a really good, nice toe drag shot right, of it, right out of his toe drag. And then talk about, you got to talk about the senior leadership. Drag and shoot, Cole Ferry. Drag and shoot. We're going to need a lot of that tonight. Yeah, and then senior captain uh, Trent Gray, recently named captain after taking over for Adam Burtzlaff, who was the captain the prior two years. Uh, Falcons look to lean on him heavily on the defensive side. And then I would say arguably one of the better players for the Falcons is his D partner in Trey Zebel. Where's the number five? He's that big, tall, lanky defenseman. Really smooth skater. Coming out of the AAA ranks, uh, the U18 Bell Tire. So highly touted here. It's gonna be nice to see what he can do on defense. Trey Zebel, number five. And a lot of guys, it's gonna maybe take him a minute or two to get the butterflies out. Even if you've been here before, this is opening night, there's a good crowd, and as we mentioned, a good team in to play the Falcons tonight in the Indiana Hoosiers. Made it to the Final Four Nationals last year and won the division the last two years in a row. So the Falcons, it's not like they're gonna be caught by surprise, they know they have a tough test for them tonight. Yeah, and looking forward, uh, looking at, I know I shouldn't do this, but looking ahead in the Falcons schedule, they got a tough weekend next week. It only gets after. easier when you play the best team first. Yeah, hey, it, it only gets easier from here, Chip. Yeah, there's, yes. No doubt about it. We'll talk a little bit about the schedule coming up because yeah. they got some pretty heavy home games here on the schedule. Yeah, so the first five home games, or first five games are uh, home games. And that would be these two games against Indiana, so tonight and then tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. We'll September 16th, yeah, yep, 3 p.m. And then next weekend, same game, same times of the, same game times on 7 p.m. Yep, on, on Friday, Friday night, 3 p.m. on Saturday, correct. And that's against Lake State, as last year we traveled to them. They swept us last year. Uh, we look to return the favor to them. And then we have a home and home with Miami. And then I believe we go to Florida. 
five straight to start the season. It's important the Falcons get off to a good start here tonight. And Indiana getting their starting lineups announced right now. Yeah. As I said, there's a good crowd here tonight. Indiana's got some good fans here too. Yeah, and, uh, two players to watch for the for the Hoosiers would uh, be number 29, Will, Durant, Will Jeremy. Uh, he's a sophomore from Hinsdale, Illinois, and then Another sophomore, Ethan DiLorenzo, number 11 from Naperville, Illinois. Something that I've noticed about this Indiana team, they don't have a lot of guys from Indiana. They have a lot of guys from Illinois. Well, a lot of guys in Indiana are playing basketball. <laughs> so that's all right. Doesn't matter where you get them from. They got some, they got one from up in Canada. Yeah. So I know it's a uh, multinational game here today. The Falcons, no Canadians on the team this year. But we're enjoying from fans from all over the country and hopefully up in Toronto joining us for this game. Bowling Green Club Hockey versus Indiana. And of course, here's the starting lineups for Bowling Green. Trey Zebel, he will start the game along with Gary or er, Trent Gray. And We'll see how this defense can hold up in front of this young goaltending crew. Y you want to actually let your goalie see and save the first five shots. It generally is a rule in the game. Extend it after that if you can, you know, but yeah. if you don't want a team to jump on you early, so we'll see what kind of start yes. we get here. Yeah, so we got the national anthem here. Beautiful Spotify version of the national anthem, I'd say. Is that how they do it these days? Yeah. Spotify, okay. Whatever it was, it worked out. We've been at plenty of games where you sit around the length of the national anthem, waiting for the national anthem. Yeah, it never comes. It's more the waiting and, the, oh, come on, sound system, you got this. It's something we were working on previous. I've been here for about three, four hours just working, making sure everything works okay. And if that's our this the hiccup in pregame is our worst hiccup for the game I'll take it well I was gonna say Matt Crandall and Chip Brennan here we had some technical difficulties here on the broadcast but it seems like the in-house guys got the technical difficulties taken care of no problem there on the anthem and we're ready to go on the 2023 2024 season Bowling Green Club Hockey Let's see if this first line can set the tone for the season let's go falcons yeah luke kerr or luke Kerr didn't play a lot last year it was a bottom six forward as the falcons he got a two on one maybe right up front but couldn't get that to work luke kerr with losing chase and all had to step into that number one center role well Kerr tried a one-handed pass there to start things off oh there's a nice look for indiana good zone entry Waited for the late man. Didn't connect. Bowling Green's going to have to be sharp. Indiana with some nice puck protection. Backdoor shot. Right off the bat, Indiana. It's a backdoor play for Indiana. Defenseman got activated. 
jumped up into the play. Found his man on the back door. Let's look, good work here through the middle. Defense gets activated, and oh, the back door play, the Falcons couldn't pick it up. And wanted a good start to the season there. That first shift, that was not the start we were looking for. No, it was not. Maybe the Horvath line can provide it. Here's Horvath right here with a heavy shot. The big bang play there by the Falcons. Horvath let it rip. First shot was dangerous. Yeah, speak of the devil, it's a quick way to answer Horvath. Of course, him and Chase Nisky played, graduated together, different high schools, but same conference. Been playing together for a couple years now. Have those two. They're joined with a freshman on that line in Andrew Updike. Well, the difference there in those chances is Indiana didn't have to beat the goaltender. It was a backdoor play. And that was David Crandall with the big hit. You know a lot of, you've seen him a lot, play a lot. Yeah, Horvath though had to try to beat the goaltender from 40 feet. That didn't go, but it was still a good chance. But yeah, the Falcons looking to pick things up. David Crandall, yes. <laughs> My son, Chip. <laughs> oh, that's the relation. He's gonna be graded on a little tougher <laughs> scale here today than these other players. Let's see if he can get anything going. Here's, a, here's numbers. Two on one, Mark Rudo. Rudo with a good zone entry, but he couldn't find his way to the net. He got behind there a couple times. Couldn't make anything happen. Got roughed up for the effort. There's a one on one. Good play there by Indiana. Just to shoot through the defense's back. You have no one helping you. No one's back. So Simono, Aiden, they just tried to shoot through. That did not get through. BG keeps us a one goal game. But a slow start here for the Falcons. First shift, Indiana jumps on top of them. Yeah, Bob, or, I almost, oh man, I'm used to saying Bobcat, Bobcats as I'm used to broadcasting high school here. Uh, the Falcon third line, two on one though. Good blast block, good save there, Riley Martin. I think he just needed to get warmed up, like you said, those first five shots. Well, that went out the door. So <laughs> the first one went in. So the first five shots went out the door. But the Falcons, a good block shot there. And just gonna have to pick up the pace here. It seems like Indiana has come here and they got a little more jump in their step than the Falcons do right now. And the Falcons running four lines to start the game as their fourth line's out. With two seniors and a sophomore. No, call off there, yeah. Okay, there was some technical difficulty. That was my fault, Chip. <laughs> my brain just froze up for a minute, so let's get back to it. Ooh, good break out there by Jeff Wood over to John Jaros, but. Speaking of St. Francis State champions, John Jaros was on that St. Francis night team. It was a good breakout by the Falcons, but they couldn't get anything going. No speed generated through the neutral zone. Look at this, Trey Zebel, the guy, I told, player to watch. Has the puck there, oh. Tried to pass through a couple guys that didn't connect, but you see Zebel, he's not afraid to jump up and get in the play to create Save. some offense. Good save here on that three on two by Riley Martin. Got his shoulder on that to deflect it in the netting. So it's up and down hockey right now. My Quality chance early by Indiana has them up one to zero. Least favorite thing here at this ice arena though is definitely that 236 over in the corner. 
It's gonna haunt me. It's curfew clock. It is a curfew clock. They enforce it. Been here for many games where they've been stopped, especially if you get to an overtime situation. Oh yeah, well, you so we gotta take that BG Northview game. Yeah, we gotta take <laughs> care of business here pre-overtime. Let's do it in three periods. Falcons definitely doing a decent job in the face-off dot so far. Something I've noticed. Ooh, can't do that. Can't clear it in the middle of the ice. Ferry with a takedown. Mike Papuanu trying to draw a penalty there, nothing. Oh, take it wide with speed. Well, you don't have the speed, still take it wide. Falcons once again able to get in the Indiana zone, but not able to generate anything once they got there. I think we got a penalty no, on icing. Indiana. Oh, it was an icing. icing. As, uh, Cannot change up on an icing, so the Falcons can change up. They're not the offending team. They're not the icing team. Indiana's going to have to go with a line of five they had out there. Perhaps catch them tired here because they did want to change. And maybe a set face-off play here in the offensive zone. Yeah, Horvath, one of our better center icemen. Another backdoor play. Oh, fancy. Fancy stuff, wow. Patrick Brandenburg. Oh! Chance for the Falcons coming down. Falcon, it was yeah. Horvath. For Falcons looking five-hole. Both their solid chances have come five-hole. Well, a couple of shots high, now low. Mix it up on this goaltender. You can't be predictable on your chances. But I think it's going to take a tip or a rebound to break the seal on this guy for Indiana. Indiana liking, looking at that back door again, it looked like. Yeah, they've been able to work it down low. It's been good for him in the offensive zone right now and the Falcons are forced to ice it. Yeah. Sammy Billis, the junior goaltender, number 30. Yeah, if he sees the puck, there's a great chance that he is going to save it, so we're going to need some tips. Going to need some rebounds. It might even take a tip the puck and then a rebound yeah. to get him scrambling. Yeah, something, something to keep an eye out is with the freshmen for the Falcons or anyone coming from high school to college, you can ice the puck and still change. But in college, you can't change once you ice the puck. The icing from that Falcon play or the play from the Falcons was a freshman that iced the puck. He just lifted the puck up without thinking because he thought he could ice it. You could always get relief. You could yep. always get it iced and get back to the bench. The coach might yell at you, but the puck's not in the net though. So you just got yelled at for icing it. The puck gets in the net. The coach is usually yelling a little bit worse. Here's a chance. Set up the uh, first goal there. Matthew McKay, he's at it again. Great breakout pass. And this first line for Indiana is buzzing. Here's Zebel. Oh, that's a hook. Chance for Zebel with that big, Ooh. strong stride to get away from everybody. Got hooked to the neutral zone. As you said, Chip, slowed him up a little bit. And that might have been the difference there. This shot getting on net or getting redirected. I th it was blocked and it went in the netting. Yeah, it was definitely redirected. Well, that's why defensively, you know, get that stick extended. See if you can redirect some of those shots high and up out of the arena. BG can't do it on that one. That heavy shot got through the defense and got on net. It was a good save, though. Riley Martin, the freshman goaltender for Bowling Green from Livonia, Michigan. Not a great start, but he certainly settled in. I think the team still has about another notch, another gear to get to, to uh, get to Indiana's level oh, right. Oh, big hit by, I think that was your son. 
Well, he's done a couple of good things in the defensive zone. It's time to turn things up the other side of the rink. Yeah, he'll see, he'll see some time on that number one power play unit. Little David Crandall. Hitting's definitely picked up on this shift. Well, and then hopefully the intensity picks up a little bit because Indiana was carrying the flow. They definitely carried the pace here early, scored on the first shift, Ooh. set the Falcons back. Jeff Wood almost created the turnover there. The problem with that is the next five minutes, I think, went okay for the Falcons. They've been going punch for punch, stride for stride, maybe a little bit behind, but you're trailing by one chip. The way Indiana's playing, they don't look like they're done for the period. So Falcons got to get on the scoreboard here before Indiana starts chipping away at that lead of theirs. I know you didn't like that call there in the neutral zone. Yeah, that was, that was a clear hit or a clear uh, interference call. Now Chip's running technical. <laughs> he's doing color tonight and he's actually the backup <laughs> official. So if something happens, he's got his referee jersey I up do. here. I do, it's in the locker room. He's ready to jump out there. Frustrating team to play against though, Indiana, because every time you look at them, there's at least two guys back and they got that back pressure too. So unless you can generate some speed through the neutral zone, you're looking up at nothing but red jerseys and here it is again. Oh shoot. Oh, good block. That's Trent. an excellent play there, oh. Trent Gray. <laughs> I mean, the captain selling out. And that was a turnover right in front of Bowling Green's own net. Sarnowski. It was a good play here to get it deep, but the breakout's been pretty clean for Indiana. There's really been no hits or no big pressure in the offensive zone here for no Bowling turnover. Green, but here's a chance. Oh! Good look, look back door. Same type of play that Indiana had scored on. Uh -huh. Look into the back door. That was offside. Oh, what a save. What a beautiful save there. Riley Martin, three on two the other way. Riley Martin, I said it, he warmed himself up into the game. He's into it now, and he better be. It's odd man rushes everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean going the wrong way. Oh. Three on one, three on two. Oh, 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 Crandall. Gotta try to keep this puck out of the net. Get a whistle if you can. Net's off too. The net is off and it's back on. Some good officiating by Dibble right there. There's no reason to stop the play. Indiana's fresh pressing. Fresh legs, fresh legs, Chase Nitschke. Oh, nice move. Tried to drop underneath the defense. Oh. A shot from the point. Oh! Crandall tried to get another one in front. It didn't happen. Uh. Oh! Beautiful save. Riley is on his game. I think it was just that jitters, freshman jitters there, first game. Well, and it's a play I think the Falcons probably would have picked up now. They got the juices going, got the legs running. And uh, woo, couldn't pick that up, though. Once again, Martin makes one save. Rebound goes wide. And anything that someone said about let's ease Riley Martin into this game, if we're Bowling Green, our young freshman goaltender, that's out the door. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The ice has definitely been tilted towards Riley's end, and he is facing all kinds of action. Off the rush, off the cycle, broken plays, turnovers. 10. Bowling Green lucky right now. They only trail Nine, by one. Six. 10 to six shots in favor of Indiana right now. So, 10 shots, I would say, of the 10. At least six were quality chances. And their little teardrop there will get on net. That's be counted as a shot on net. But 
I don't know. It's up to our, our our official statisticians looking at me at that one. He's not sure. That teardrop would have went. I would, I would agree with him on that. If it, the goalie yeah, wasn't there, would, it would have went in. Uh, yes, that is technically a shot on goal, but it would have bounced first. And it would have bounced right in. But either way, 10-6, to six, the shot's oh, on net. Over. The play on the ice has reflected it. Bowling Green has some work to do. The good news is they only trail by one goal. So if they can get some pressure and get that tying goal, turn the tide here in this first period, then I think it would be an okay start. Well, if Indiana keeps pressing, keeps pressing, and adds to this lead, well, then things aren't going so well in the first period of the first game. Yeah, sorry, I was... Spacing. This technical thing, you know, come on. Yeah. Trying to run the cameras, trying to run the computer, trying to run the monitor, and then trying to keep up with the color. Chip, I'm gonna say, I'll give you right now, I'll give you a B minus. Okay, that's I'll better, give than, you a B minus. better than what I thought. Good save there by Riley, and Mr. Martin. Well, you were prepared. I came in, you were prepared, <laughs> you were on time. Yeah. Okay, everything was going well. Yeah, I thing. thought, he until saw it started, he saw that now, shot too. Yes. Well, you want your goalies to see the shots? We want the audience to see the shots too, so if the camera and the crew and everyone can keep up, that's what we would love. Here we go, Rudo. Well, once again, a shot on net, but I'm not gonna call it a quality chance. Uh, hand pass. Good call here from the back official. The front official, Dibble, did not see it. Perry did made the call at first i thought it was maybe a penalty yeah i was like what? i did not see any penalties and then so i saw the hand pass motion it has been a penalty free first period i don't mean to jinx anything <laughs> or anyone but it's been relatively clean there's been a couple calls maybe that could have been called but they've kept the flow going very well there we go okay we're back we're good yeah, I know. It'll 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 refresh it. So oh, big hit. Oh, that's a penalty, John Jaros. I think the initial hit here by Jaros is clean, but it was the finishing move when he gets up top that is going to be called. And I had just mentioned. A penalty free period. Oh no, yeah, no, I think actually th he threw a punch. Before, yeah, the, the, yeah, right that, there, the second, right there, the second yep. move, yeah. The first move was fine, and then the extra move. So Jaros will be the first penalized Falcon this year. The odds were pretty good it was gonna be either him or my son. <laughs> so Jaros wins in that pool if you had him. John Jaros, first penalty. Let's see about the first penalty kill for the Falcons. Indiana, a lot of movement here. No one's gone back door yet. Well, they've played well five on five, so oh, I expect they should play well here five on four. Oh, that puck got up into the netting. So no, good Kirk penalty kill in here four. for the first quarter <laughs> of this penalty to Jaros. What'd they call it, roughing? It's always a rough. <laughs> it's always a rough with Jaros. <laughs> He's not the kind of guy uh, to really hook or trip you. Yeah. What a win. Horvath on that faceoff win there. Got it all the way down. Cameron Horvath, yes. Great. Right off the faceoff, all the way down. Kill some more time. Of course, he loves this arena. He did the Michigan. Yeah, I was about to say. Sports Center top 10. Sports Center top 10 in on his, his Northview Wildcat days. Yes. Oh, what a move. Oh, what a block. I think that was Crandall. Yeah, David blocked that one. Oh, oh, and he'll go the other way. Interference, maybe? He didn't get the interference call. Got the block in the zone clear. Can't get that one all the way out, though. Indiana has possessed the puck this period. That's for sure. Yes. You Another block. You mentioned all the guys from Illinois on Indiana squad. Well, they grew up watching the Blackhawks win three Stanley Cups. 
And it shows because a lot of passing. They have just great puck possession, good speed, good pace. They shoot the puck hard, unselfish. That's what I like is a guy's holding the puck. Yeah, not because he's looking for his own shot. He's looking to set somebody else up. I've been very impressed with the Hoosiers here today. They come in highly billed, and they had to retool a little bit this year, but it looks like they've done the job. Yeah. Last 10 seconds. This is when you really got to reach down. Oh, I don't think Martin saw that one. Riley Martin, of course, it. freshman goaltender for the oh. Bowling Green Falcons. Go, Here's a chance. Get here. A oh, good body position there just to box him out. Chance for the uh, Falcon shorthanded there. Did not transpire. They're back to full strength. In fact, they're better than full strength. They got six out there right now, yeah. plus the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But Trent Gray, he realized that he got off. They'll start at five on five. The penalty has been killed. The momentum hasn't been. Oh, that's a clean breakout right here. Had numbers, but didn't have the speed. This Indiana team is really flying out here tonight. Good dangles, though. And a nice shot high. No rebound available. In fact, there has not been a rebound available for the Falcons yet in this first period. Looking for their first rebound of the season. Falcons look the other side, but it was a 1-1-3. The Falcons are caught up in now and even those three can't clog the neutral zone. Save. Good chance for Wood he up and down the ice. Uh, Two times Crandall. here. Oh, missed the net. That's yeah, a bad turnover there by Bowling Green. They've had a number of bad turnovers tonight, <laughs> and they've been in their own end. You yeah. can turn it over on fancy plays behind your back stuff in the offensive zone, although that's not recommended either. You start doing it in the defensive zone, well, then we have a situation. Yeah. And it's actually been a situation for the Falcons all night so far. In case you just tuned in, Indiana scored on their first shot, first shift of the game. And they really haven't looked back yet. They had their ears pinned back and they are on the attack. But Riley Martin in net, the freshman for Bowling Green has held the Falcons in this and he's gonna need some offense here to come out in the next two and a half minutes, even this thing up. Good play there by uh, what a save. Sammy Billis. Billis was looking for the assist, the goaltender on the other side for Indiana. And you talk about how well Riley Martin's played. Billis, that type of goaltender maybe even better, but we just haven't seen it today because the Falcons haven't had the chances. That's a good shot. Yeah, Luke Kaur. Got the good shot. Great hands by Coor and a scorer's mentality, that is for sure. And it's rare to see Trey Zebel take a tumble there. Oh, good save, rebound. It's a good play there by Indiana's. You talk about rebounds and once again, Martin makes the save. It's a good shot here low. A pass right off the pad. The rebound is there. It's a set play by Indiana. Hoping Bowling Green could turn the offense on here in the last two and a half minutes. They cannot. Indiana adds to the lead. It's two nothing. Hoosiers and Falcons. I said it before, but it was one nothing. And there was a lot more time left. But if they're not careful, Indiana's gonna add to this lead before they get to the first intermission. The red team is flying right now and they lead two to zero. Yeah, another, something that the Falcons worked on in practice was those two on two rushes. Heads up. 
uh, Indiana was defending, or was on the offensive end there. Ah. I don't know if we have the official score on that last goal for Indiana. No idea. I, we can rewind and look, but. No, no, that's fine. I just gonna have to start marking these goals and assists. Chip, I thought you were the official statistician too, man. How many hats are you wearing today? Not nah, enough, not I'll many. tell you that. Hard shot, got redirected. But once again, broken record, Indiana on the attack. Plenty of puck possession and plenty of offensive zone attack time. Here's another rebound laying in front. Loose in the crease. Oh, that was games there for Riley Martin. And Martin is putting on a show here for sure. And the only reason this one isn't four to nothing is the young Bowling Green goaltender. He wanted shots, he wanted action. Indiana has obliged. They lead this one by two. Nine seconds remaining in the first period. Falcons, defensive zone faceoff, gonna be lucky to get out of here without another chance or another goal. Indiana, as time winds down, the clock may have been the only thing keeping this one at two to nothing. The Falcons chip took some punches there in the first period, one early, one late from Indiana. They score on both of them. And the Falcons trail two nothing in a period where I think they struggled to get going, but had a little brief window there where they could have tied this game up. But final thought is going to intermission. They trail by two. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Um. I think in that middle middle part of the period, five to 15 minutes in, the, from in that period, the Falcons were skating with the, the, the Hoosiers. Uh, mainly it was that third line for the, for the Falcons and uh, Dubendorfer, Nelson, and Rudo really got some of those quality chances for them. It seemed like Indiana just played with a little more pace though in the first period. And Bowling Green's got to pick up the skating here the rest of the way if they want to compete. Yes, I would, I would also agree with that. As, um, Bowling Green definitely had a lot more hits, uh, especially your son, David, uh, laid the body a couple times. But whenever you hit, you get, you're, it means you're not skating with them. And in order to stay skating with them, you got to move your feet. All the hits were in the defensive zone. We mentioned that. Nothing going on the four check. No pressure in the offensive zone for the Falcons. But talk about this. Sammy Billis, the goaltender here for Indiana, a highly touted goaltender here last year, led his team to the division title and the national final four. He's a junior, he's experienced, he comes in, he's the big deal. Bowling Green didn't get a lot of chances against him. He looked good, the chances they did get, but he's gotta be staring down the ice and Riley Martin, the freshman goaltender here for Bowling Green, saying, hey, I think the Falcons got something in this guy because Martin had a number of grade A chances that he saved there in the first period. I'd say six or seven outstanding saves. Yes, I, I would agree with that. And most of them, he was not able to see. Um, I think the Falcons defense needs to buckle up and... Well, the first... Indiana goal, as you remember, it was a backdoor play to start the game. First shot, first shift. Defensive assignment missed. Tap in goal behind the goaltender. The second goal made the original save. Defense couldn't pick up the rebound or the rebounder. And Indiana was able to rebound it. Get it in for the second goal.
Welcome back. Slater Ice Arena in beautiful Bowling Green, Ohio. Bowling Green State University hosting the Indiana University Hoosiers. And kind of a rude guest here in the first period Indiana was because they came out and really put it to the Falcons. First shift scored on their first shot Added an insult to that injury late in the period and lead it 2 nothing after one on a very impressive period by the red and white. Yes, oh nice move up there. Um, Matt Crandall along with Chip Crennan and Chip's our technical producer here tonight and he's running color. I have to say Chip, you're doing a better job on color than you are on the technical brother. <laughs> I try. Um. But yeah, Falcons not starting with that top line, uh, starting with Horvath's line in, second, in the second period, maybe Coach sending a message as both goals allowed for the Falcons were the top line was out for the Falcons. Well, you couldn't have had a worse start to the first period than BG did. First shift, first shot, they're down one nothing. Freshman. That's not the way you want to introduce your freshman goaltender to college hockey. But I'll tell you, Riley Martin, number 33 for Bowling Green, really settled in in that first period. He was under fire, and Bowling Green's lucky they're only trailing by two. Yes. Ooh. As the uh, Falcons head to the power play, I think Luke Kaur got his stick slashed out of his hand. Interference. Griffin Timmons to the box. Is the call, the sophomore defenseman from Valparaiso. He gonna sit two. So there's an Indiana guy from Indiana for you, Chip, right there. Yeah. But he got his name announced for the wrong reason here. Yeah. Two now. minutes in the penalty box, but it doesn't matter with this Indiana team. They lead the rush here shorthanded. And great back pressure coming the other way. So they're not gonna give you Ooh, any room Here we to go. Breathe. Oh. Zebo got it to Crandall. The shot got deflected. Here's Crandall again. Put that one through. Couldn't get the tip or the rebound. Some tic-tac-toe action there. Finished off by Luke Coor in front. Crandall started it. This is a power play marker here by the Falcons. The crowd are on their feet. Crandall to Ferry. Let's take a look. It was Mikey. Good give and go there. Crandall, Ferry, Coor. I think that's Zebo in the corner. Yeah, with Zebel with the primary assist. Zebel, okay. Well, there you go, Trey. The freshman defense, no, or the sophomore. sophomore defenseman. What a great little touch pass there by Zebel. And we mentioned Coor and his ability to score and his want ability to score. The guy wants to score. He wills the puck to himself on the power play there, and it's an easy tap in for Luke. And he just seems to do it every year. Indiana now. Dangerous situation here. You wanna have a good shift coming off of a goal, certainly a tying goal, and a tying goal when I think most cards have the Falcons being outplayed here right now. But I said they had a lot of fight in them in the first period. They needed something like that offense to get them going. The crowd got going on the goal. The team got jumping. Let's see if that adrenaline leads to something. Oh, a high and heavy shot. Just missed. Some good dangles to get in the shooting area. Oh, there's a penalty right here. Falcons just scored with the man advantage. They're gonna get another crack at it right here. <laughs> Doom and Dorfer. Just skating away. 
Dubendorfer got tangled up in the neutral zone. You see there, he doesn't want any extracurriculars because Indiana, it's a smart play there. The freshman, Ray Myers, he got tied up with Dubendorfer, thought maybe if I start something, they'll call something on Dubendorfer. Well, he wasn't falling for it. Yeah, Falcons sending right back out that those same five that were on the ice before when the Falcons scored their first goal. It's Indiana with the clear. Nice high clear there by Indiana. Waste some time, get the Falcons spread out. Oh, and a bad bounce there off the end board. And Martin had to make a nice save there. In case you just tuned in, number 33, the freshman goaltender for Bowling Green, outstanding in that first period to keep it a two goal game. I think I may have said the Falcons tied it up here. No, I, that was, may have been me. They have the score. It was two, oh, now it's one. Oh, here we go, one. two on one. That's a hook. They cut it in half. Oh, the referee was just adjusting his chin strap. I <laughs> thought he was putting the hand up. We thought about calling it, didn't. Some good puck movement here. here. Oh, look for the tip there. Oh, nice pad pass there. Trying to clean it up in front was Cole Ferry. Ice, oh, ooh, that should have been icing. Waved off, generous bounce. It looked like it was clearly an icing there. Crandall had a lane for the pass, missed it. He's not happy, he wants to get a line change. Falcons love to find Nitschke streaking up the ice here on a breakout, but it'll be fine Trent Gray. 20 seconds remaining here in the Falcons' second power of the play of the game. They scored on the oh, first what and almost find. scored here on the second. Another bing bang play by the Falcons. Just missed. And Nitschke, oh. he's calling for it. He's beaver tapping over there. Wants the puck. Good give and go. They pass it off. Even, even, even. Nitschke, good patience. He's a shooter, but he can pass also. As you see right the net there, came off. the net came off there, and it was a dangerous situation. So the referee blew the whistle. Offensive zone faceoff coming up here for the Falcons. That goal has inspired the Falcons, I would say. Chip, sorry, say that again. I was watching as the Indiana Hoosiers can't change. Did they start to change? The goal has inspired the Falcons. Oh yes, I would agree with that 110% as they had, they start off that second power play a little shaky, but they found their groove once that second power play unit got on the ice. But the pace has been there and the will has been there and the battle has been there. So it's been an excellent period for Bowling Green. Trailed two nothing entering the period. Got a power play, got a power play goal to make it a two to one game. Got another power play carried the momentum see if this offensive faceoff off the penalty kill by Indiana can lead it anything but looks like it's a clean breakout here by the red Ooh, good save there by Martin awesome room to move up the ice there puck just jumped over his stick it was Chandler Odell the sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Oh, a jam play. That's off. Coming off the wall. Got it low and another try at the back door tap. This time the Falcons picked it up. Something they addressed in the locker room after the first period. Defensively, they have to be a lot better in front of their own goaltender. Oh, nice chip play there, Odell. Oh, nice shot, rebound. Twisted wrister right there in. by Odell. The rebound was available. Jaros took a stab at it, and then he got roughed up behind the net. He's late getting back into the play. Up and down action here from Slater Ice Arena in Bowling Green, Ohio. About 20 miles south of Toledo, in northwest Ohio, Wood County. A beautiful campus here. And what a great day it was. 
in Bowling Green. Indiana's in town for a Friday, they, yep. seven o'clock, and then a Saturday tomorrow, September 16th, 3 p.m. So we got the afternoon game tomorrow. Nice keep by Crandall. Oh. <laughs> Wanda tried to get it to the net, puck rolled up on him. Then he tried to get it to the corner. And he chipped that one up in the net. A little bit too much golf over the summer. Is that what he did over As the summer? As that 62 degree just got up into the netting right there. Is that what he did over the summer? I know that's what. A little bit of golf. Though. Most hockey players do, but. A little bit of golf. Though. Been a good period here for the white team. Ooh, trail don't two break to a light. Trail <laughs> two nothing. Two to one now. And I would say Bowling Green has been on the attack here. Certainly with a man advantage. But five on five, they carried the play here in the second period. The quicker you can get that first goal out of the way, the better off you are. Indiana didn't have that great of a lead. So the Falcons, they know it. They're pretty Ooh, much, they're very much shot. in this. Quick shot right off the draw for Papalanu. Great play there by Papalanu. It's a set face-off play, and you got to score some of those throughout the season. You work on face-off plays for a reason. The offensive zone ones are the fun ones because that's when you get the opportunities to score. It's the defensive ones, you know, those face-off plays that, you know, you may not take it seriously. You're so far away from the net, but... Anytime you get that close, Chip, come on. Run those face-off plays. One-timer just missed there. Indiana, this line has been impressive, though. Oh, nice dangles there off the zone, but a terrible pass leads to an icing. He's used to playing with Nitschke. Papuanu, used to playing with Nitschke with those wheels. Yep. And Bowling Green couldn't catch up to that one. So icing there by the Falcons. They cannot change. They wanted to. We've got a tired unit out there right now. Indiana looking to take advantage. Oh, big save. Had the tip there in front, did the Hoosiers. Big save by Martin. Now Bowling Green will get that change they want. Indiana's going to stay with the same unit. They were fresh, just won the faceoff, ran a nice little offensive face-off play of their own and do it till the other team stops it. Oh, Bowling Green, looked like they won that one but then gave it away. A turnover leads to one, two shots. One got on Martin, the other missed. But yeah, this team, unselfish, great puck possession, great passing, but they're not shy about shooting it either. Nice play there, Dubendorfer trying to get on his horse, couldn't beat the ice, oh, he did beat the icing. Took a shot to the head for it, but battling behind the net. Bowling Green can't come up with it. Indiana turns it up the other way. Great transition through the neutral zone. They've had that speed going, not only in the neutral zone here, but Indiana's shown great speed in all three zones, but certainly off the rush, when they're attacking, you know it. All right, Chip, what do we got going here? I'm we need looking. to uh, get a good shift out of the yeah. Falcons because it's been back-to-back -back shifts now. Indiana's starting to carry that play again. Yeah, and they're looking to Horvath's line here. Oh, right in front, Horvath. Oh, good block there. Haven't had to say Updike a lot. Uh, is Indiana going three on one the other way? Oh, boy. Took that one. Score. Took that one in the pads. Horvath got ran into the corner, interfered with but I thought they ran the goalie a little bit there and did it just enough not to catch the ref's attention. But it caught my attention. And Indiana's caught my attention since the drop of the puck. They've been flying out there. National championship semifinalists. Off the mask of Martin, loose, oh, he's got it. It was loose, did not have it. And the referee whistled it down. I think he may have had it temporarily. It did pop out of there. But once again, Riley Martin 
with a lot of action right around the blue paint. Indiana's defensive goal there, or BG's defensive goal there. Indiana's attack goal, and they've been attacking it. And they got it out, did BG. Oh, look at this guy, just walks right through the middle. It looked like three Ooh. defenders were there for BG. They get him for icing. That is gonna be an icing there. I thought that was a shot to the head along the yeah. wall there. But Bowling Green has had two consecutive power plays. That one was on the edge. Referees do not call it. It's been a good game as far as refereeing. I haven't really had any issues with the officials I yet. I have. <laughs> yeah, Chip, that's right. He has been throwing his arms up a little bit here. He's been shaking his head, arms folded. Another big save. He's had all the body language and mannerisms going of someone that's not probably as happy as I am <laughs> with the officiating. But hey, it's two to one. I mean, what team's gonna complain right now? Maybe Indiana? Maybe they should be up a little bit more? I don't know. I think BG's fought back rather nicely and they haven't fought all the way back yet. So if Indiana turns it up a little bit, they'll be right back where they wanna be. And if BG can step up their play, yeah, they might be able to tie this one up. But right now it's certainly all Indiana in the first period. Bowling Green has shown themselves well though halfway through the second. We'll see if they can finish this second period as well as they've started. Oh, oh, oh here we go. Wood and Jaros couldn't get on the oh, same page. Oh, Jaros reverse hit though. Jaros had some extra words. Not sure what that was all about. A good rush there by Wood, the Norfolk product. Jaros, St. Francis, of course. They couldn't get on the same page offensively. Oh, here's a nice chance. Tipped wide. This one came around hard. Wood could not get to it. He wants a change. Indiana's picked up the pace once again. They're flying. Bowling Green's got a partial change going. We'll see if they can get the rest of it done. Two thirds now. Jaros caught behind the play. Here comes Ferry. Great shot there by Ferry. Ooh. Good release, and he needed to escape a big hit, and he did. Oh, Kerr. But Oh, Coor late coming oh, back. Oh, that's a pen. They got Coor for a cross check in the back. Coor is going to take a penalty here. First penalty of the period for Bowling Green. Get a cross check. And they almost caught him. He was late getting back into the play. In a quick transition, almost sprung Coor. He got so excited, so pumped up. Missed the pass, but carried that adrenaline right into the back of the Indiana player, as you said. So this is a big penalty kill here for the Falcons. Indiana, a chance to go up by two. Again, they led this one two to nothing. Big Z with a big clear. Good face off win and clear there by the Falcons. That's how you want to start off a penalty kill make the other team go 200 feet. And the problem with that is Indiana can go 200 feet. This guy can do it on his own. Number 29, Will Jeremy. Looking back door. This sophomore, they've been flying all night long. Hinsdale, Illinois. Oh, nice stretch pass here to the outside. And no help, so if you don't got any help, just wait a little bit and you'll find some. Something I am hearing a lot is the Falcon bench is starting to talk more since, the, since they scored the power play goal. Good puck movement here, good patience. 
by Indiana. You don't mind the patience. I mean, if they're going to pass around, the less chances they're going to get. And then the turnover and a nice clear here. Perfectly placed, too. Horvath's going to get there first if the goalie didn't come out. Nice play here to F2. Second forward stayed high. He waited, got the turnover. Colin Nelson. Oh, tipped. Off of a Falcon and in. Martin also got a piece of it. Let's uh, take a look here. A shot there, redirected in front. An innocent looking shot, but I just mentioned Indiana, they're not shy about shooting the puck. They knew they had numbers. So if you get a body in front, then the defense gets a body in front. That's two bodies in front, get a redirected puck or a tip puck. That's all you need on the power play, and that's all Indiana needed. They're up two again. Scores three to one. Yep. Uh, two power play goals for in this game so far, one for each side. Well, the... That was a timely one there by Indiana. The Falcons had fought back to two to one, had a couple of chances, including a power play of their own to tie it up. They couldn't. And all of a sudden it's Indiana up two again and attacking again. The Bowling Green's got some work to do just to get back where they were. Nice play. And we're offside. Call it on a delayed offside. I don't know if I agree with that. This is a close play here at the blue line. I believe on the replay there, though, it was offsides. Good action, though. Good attack there by the Falcons. Trailing by two. But don't seem as discouraged as they were at two to nothing. Three to one now. They know they can put the puck in the net. They can get some chances. Let's see if they can get them here in the next 546. Make this a one goal game going into the third. It'll be Zebo with the clear. A nice job there attacking once again by Indiana. Three guys attacking all on the same page. Z-Bowl did a good job just to break that one up, but once again, doesn't take long for him to regroup and get back at it. Here's a chance for Bowling Green to get something done on the attack. Ooh. Heavy hit along the wall. Oh, nice play, Indiana. Back in behind the defense and in front of Riley Martin, another tap in goal for the Hoosiers, and they make it four to one. They're gonna open this thing up here. A nice little play on the backhand. The one hand on the stick, area defending will not work in college hockey. No, Riley Martin's looking out for some help here. And three of the four goals have been right in front of the goaltender on guys that appear to have been covered but they're finding ways to redirect pucks past our goalie. And another one was a redirected power play shot that he was screened on. So Riley Martin, a good performance by him, is going south quick. Falcons trail four to one. They do have an offensive zone face off. Horvath on the face off. It was a draw, Indiana gets some help and they get an easy Nitschke. clear. Ooh. Nitschke's shown good hands and good speed. And we need a finishing touch here. If Horvath can get him the puck. Attacking with three again, the three on three though. Once again, Martin didn't it, know where the puck was. No, he once had again, it. Indiana player able to get his stick on a rebound in front. Davis Jeegers. 
This time was on a backhand, fallen away, and was still able to slap at it. Almost made a five to one. Chance for BG here off the faceoff. Good faceoff win by the Falcons. They're going to attack with two. Good puck handling goalie here by Billis, though. Goaltender for Indiana. Jaros battling in front. Nice play by uh, Granica. Great play there defensively. It seems like I'm off the rush with Indiana every time, but they are off the rush every time. Net got knocked off there. Wraparound situation for Indiana. Does not go. It was Ray Myers, I believe. Or maybe it was Jeegers again. Either which way, the red team is on the attack. Bloomington, you should be very proud of this team. Of course, made their way all the way to the semifinals last year of the national tournament. Won the division two years in a row. And they started out like gangbusters here tonight in Bowling Green. Had the Falcons pinned back in their own end. Most all the first period. And a lot of the second too. Jaros able to get this one in deep. The four check has not been there for the Falcons. The breakouts have been pretty clean and pretty easy for Indiana. Here's a chance for a hit along the boards. That was Jeffrey Wood. Indiana three on two. <laughs> nice job there by Indiana. Executed perfectly, did not score though. Pass didn't come across clean. Riley Martin was able to make the save, but here they go off the rush again. Good speed through the neutral zone, Indiana. Just gonna dump this one in. 240 remaining in the second period. A game or a period that Indiana entered leading two to nothing. So they got two goals in the first, two in the second. Bowling Green was able to mix in an early one here on the power play to make it two to one. But Indiana has responded and responded well. Yes, I would say compared to the last year's meetings, they were 11 to one and seven to one. Well, the Falcons are gonna have some work to do here just to keep it around that area right now because it Indiana's seems like when, it, when, when, when BG made it two to one, the Falcons had a lot of fight in them and a lot of compete. But now that it's four to one, we've lost some of that fight, lost some of that compete. And Indiana smells that. And they're, they're still, they're on the attack. Why wouldn't you be? Nice stretch pass there. Coming up through the neutral zone. And a chance for the Falcons in front. The save is made by Billis. Excellent play there. Papa Anu. And coming back the other way. This has been an up and down game for sure. Nice move out of his own end. By Bowling Green right there. That was Colin Nelson. Couldn't get far, got to the neutral zone. Indiana turns it back around the other way. Oh, another puck in front. And Riley Martin makes a, another save for the Falcons. The freshman goaltender has been good. Another chance, another low shot, another rebound. This time Bowling Green's able to clear it. Get it all the way back into the Indiana zone. But it's one pass in transition. And the puck's all the way back in the BGN. Granica can't do that. What a recovery though. It's the third or fourth time the Falcons have turned it over in front of their own goaltender here today. And another outstanding save by Riley Martin. But he trails four to one in this one, so it's gonna be hard to make that the story. But he's had a number of big saves just like that, especially in the first period. As we down, wind down the second period the end 
was a lot worse than the beginning. The Falcons did make it two to one, but two unanswered Indiana goals. We'll have our score four to one after two periods, Chip. The Falcons got their goal on the power play. One of the four goals here and one of the two in the second period for Indiana was with the man advantage. So in a game where there hasn't been many power plays, both teams able to cash in at least once. Yes, and I think Bowling Green did have most of the momentum in that second half, or in the, in the first half of the second period. And then once they took that penalty, and it was all, excuse me, it was all Indiana. Well, it was a neutral zone penalty by the Falcons and really wasn't warranted. But once again, it was a redirected goal to make it three to one and then another quick goal, a tap in to make it four to one. And those are demoralizing kind of goals when the other team just gets a tap in. Yeah, if you get a great goal and you make a great shot, that's one thing. The tap ins, that can deflate the bench. And I think the BG bench got a little deflated. Yes, I'd agree with that. And we're gonna step aside here. Uh, when we come back, we'll have third period of action right here on YouTube.
Welcome back to the third period. Bowling Green State University trails four to one to the Indiana Hoosiers. I'm Matt Crandall, along with Chip Crennan. Chip, the Falcons showed a little bit of punch there in the second period, but not enough. Still lost the period two to one and trail four to one coming into the third. Yeah, not starting off hot either. Trouble entering the zone there for Indiana. We might want to rewind that and play it over because they <laughs> haven't had much trouble entering the zone today. Martin with another. Martin, I, would, I will say, has been a bright spot for the Falcons, even though he's let four goals in. Meanwhile, Nitschke, well, oh, thank you for catching that. Nitschke with a chance there, just couldn't break through. But you're right about Riley Martin, freshman goaltender here for Bowling Green. Indiana scored the first shot on the first shift of the game, really set the Falcons back. But Martin was able to hold him in there. For the rest of the period, they trailed two to nothing. But shots in the first period, eight for Bowling Green. It's not bad, it's not great. They gave up 20 shots. In the first 20 period? shots in the first period. And Martin made 18 saves at a 900 percentage. That's not bad. And the quality of the chances were outstanding for Indiana. So when you look back at the tape, you'll be like, wow. 18 saves and a couple of 10 bell chances, about 10 10 bell chance ones also. Second period, BG did a little better. Scored that power play goal, had 10 shots on net. Indiana still 17 shots on net in the second period for a two period total of 37 so far. That's, that's, that's a, how much you won in a whole game. Well, that's even a lot for a game. I mean, you give up 37 shots, you gave up a lot of shots. And Bowling Green has blocked a number of shots and some have missed the net. But yeah, it's definitely, we mentioned throughout the game, Indiana's not shy about shooting the puck. They've possessed it a lot and they love to shoot it. There's two more right there. So this Hoosiers team has looked good. And I thought Bowling Green has played better as the game has progressed. But anytime you give up a goal on the first shot in the first shift of the game, you know you're chasing it. Yeah, you never want to have to chase, chase the puck, chase the score. I'd rather be chasing the puck than chasing the score. But you're right, I'd like to possess the puck and, and what, I'd like to lead the score. And that's what Indiana's been doing most of the night is possess the puck. It, the thing is, I, the score is sort of reflective of the game because Indiana has played a better team game individually. I think they've had some guys that have shined also. And Bowling Green hasn't really put it together yet. So I think four to one is pretty indicative of the way the game's gone so far. Now, can BG close hard and make this a tough third period for Indiana? Sure. Can they close the gap on the scoreboard? Yeah, they could. But if they're not careful, Indiana's gonna open up the gap in that lead. So the Falcons gotta be careful here. Thank you. They finally got one. Falcons back to the power play as Nelson didn't play the puck. Before Chip throws his shoulder out up here. <laughs> All right, with these referees, they finally get one. It was a chintzy one up along the wall. They call it anyway. Falcons will go to the power play for the third time tonight. They scored on one. They're at 50% for the night. The power play's at 50% for the year. But with 16.50 to go in the third, Chip. Thank I you, think I forgot to start the time. <laughs> you, 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 may not, you may not win the game with the goal here, but you can certainly set the pace and the momentum here for the third period. A good chance early right here for Bowling Green. Trouble getting out of their own end, though. Overskated there to Crandall. Now Indiana two on two. And set up the first goal here, number two. Matthew McKay for Indiana. Tied up with Crandall right now. That's. Zybol couldn't get going. Yeah. 
Sloppy power play here to start for Bowling Green. Still a minute 10 to go with the man advantage, so time to turn it around, but looks like they're gonna have to do it with the second unit. Now, no speed through the neutral zone once again. A lot of bodies to get through. When you don't got speed, tougher to get through. Try to stick handle through the crowd instead of skate through them. You're going to have trouble, and Bowling Green has had trouble tonight. That pass just out in front of Kyle and Nelson that time. Bowling Green forced back in their own end. This is Trent Gray. The captain turns and starts him out. Now here's a good breakout here for Bowling Green. A wicked shot there by Nitschke, just missed. But once again, speed through the neutral zone by Indiana, forces Bowling Green all the way back into their own end. 10 seconds remaining in the man advantage. Time for something maybe off the rush, see if the captain can get it going. Here's Trent. Gray got tripped on the play. The referee explained to him exactly what happened there and said it was right on the edge. But he's hoping to play the rest of this one out five on five. That will not be a penalty. Bowling Green will not score with the man advantage. They're one for three tonight. And I'd say the better part of that play for the last two minutes went to Indiana. Not yeah. a good power play there for the Falcons. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. And chance for Bowling Green in their own end to run a defensive breakout. That got stopped by Indiana. Their forecheck has been good. Their back check has been tenacious. And basically the team in red has been all over the ice here tonight. Bowling Green has shown flashes, but certainly not as consistent and not as deep is Indiana, the Hoosiers, showing why they are the class of this league the last two years as they've won it. And McKay couldn't get going through the neutral zone, but some loose Ooh. change picked up there. Couldn't get deposited though. Andrew Chambers in front, and Chambers like all good players Lost the puck, stopped in front. Puck comes back to him. The thing's following Chambers around. He can't knock it in though. Heads to the bench, shaking his head. It was not for lack of trying, Chip. Chambers with a good shift there. Yeah, I think it's all Indiana right now. And I think Bowling Green needs to have a momentum shift, either a big hit or. Well, you highlighted some of the stars for Indiana before the game started. And it's been them and more. Yes. I mean, they have really shown that some of the guys they had to replace from last year, they've done it, and these guys are here to play. Yeah, that's, yeah. BG having trouble, again, getting out of their own zone. Didn't have a lot of trouble getting out of their zone in the first two periods. I thought it was more up and down, but. As someone just took a high stick, nothing called. I think it was Coor. Took it up under the chin as he got tangled up with Aiden Simono. Here's a chance for Coor to get to the net. Oh, made a bull rush go into the net. Tried to get there. Nice play by Papuanu. Papuanu showing some great hands here and some good vision there. Finds Coor. Oh, and dashing to the net. Cole Fair. Ferry got tied up. I think Ferry got a piece of that, tipped it. Did not get on net though. So Sammy Billis had a pretty easy night of it so far in the Indiana goal. 18 shots through two periods for Bowling Green. Not really a lot of significance there in the chances for the Falcons. And certainly no good rebounds. Falcons finally with some ozone time. Or Bath. Block shot there by Indian. Oh, another puck goes through the crease. Chance for Nitschke. He couldn't do it. Horvath cycles it behind. And now 
Updike's got something going here for the Falcons. Good shift offensively here, but oh, turned it over going the wrong way instead of the cycle. Tried to go low to high. Crandall couldn't ride his guy out. Got a backhanded shot on that. Oh, and a hot one in front. Just got tipped wide. Great action there. Ben Rosenberg seeing what he can do in front of the bowling green net. Now the pace is picking up here in the third period. Looking Ooh, a little right more, off the ref. A little more breakneck <laughs> like it was. Oh, he took another shot. The linesman on a Friday night getting a rough ride of it. I like the way this guy has played. Number two, Matthew McKay, Zionsville, Indiana. Been a real good defender here for Indiana. He could activate it for sure and jump up and start the rush, lead the rush. Facilitate from the back end. Number two's been good. Great assist on that first goal for Indiana. Which, by the way, came a long time ago. Yeah, almost. First minute of the game, yeah. first shift of the game, first shot of the game. That's the kind of start you want if you're Indiana. And that's the kind of thing that'll leave the Bowling Green staff shaking their head. Ooh, a bull rush off the face off, right to the net. The net got knocked off, and Luke Slavin didn't like it, the freshman. He's wondering why the whistle came. Well, the net got knocked off. He took a rough ride to the net. That was it. Here's some numbers for BG if they can uh. connect here. Oh, good block there by Indiana. Getting their stick in the passing lane. Yeah, Indiana has been really kind of magical offensively, the way they possess the puck and the way they pass the puck and the way they're moving and passing, skating, shooting. But defensively, they've been as sound as you can get. Any chances BG have had have been from the outside. The goalie's been able to see it. There's been no second chances, no rebound chances, and there's been no tips. So Billis, this is the way he wrote it up for his defense and his forwards in the defensive zone. They're all on the same page. Here's some good puck movement again. Oh, a drag and shoot. Didn't fool BG there though. Rudo. Good block shot by Rudo. Speaking of block shots, have I told you about Riley Martin, the freshman goaltender? Oh, through a screen. That's junk right there. The freshman, Ray Myers. Ray Myers, I've been impressed with him for sure out of Warrenville, Illinois. And this seeing eye little snapper finds its way through plenty of traffic. That will make it five to one. And the attack has been put on once again by Indiana. They come in waves. A disheartening goal for the crowd here at BGSU. It had been a scoreless period up until then. And BG looked like they had been able to turn things around. But Indiana doesn't stop coming at you. And here they are again. Shooting pucks through bodies. Trying to get tips, trying to get rebounds, and have been able to. Oh, Gerald. <laughs> How is that not interference? <laughs> Jaros went for a wild ride through the neutral zone, and he got tangled up with this guy. They said he put as much. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Jaros. Oh man. In the neutral zone, it was an even situation there. That was just a wicked hit. I guess the Indiana player should have known he was coming, but I'm not sure. Oh man, was I was that a hard hit for sure? Oh, I, yeah. Was it a penalty? I'm not sure. Oh yeah, it was a penalty. Here's the There's the there's neutral the zone neutral play. Zone which Jaros I think gave as much as he got. He's hooking up under. He's trying to yeah. press the guy and get by him. 
Charles is going to come off the screen. Out of nowhere, boom. Maybe an elbow. They're going to get, I think they gave him a five. It was a hard shot for sure. And maybe something BG could have used around two to one or three to one. Now at five to one, I'm not sure if it's going to make much of a difference. It will make an impact for sure because that kind of a hit will get both benches up like, whoa, I don't want to be any part of a collision like that. So things are going to get settled down here. Jaros is at the box. They're talking it over. It looks like it maybe even they more than a five. five. So, Jaros there with the linesman waiting. I think he got a five and that would be it. Not sure, yep. now he's gonna be escorted off, so it was a five and a 10. <laughs> the crowd is not happy with the call. It was wicked. It was devastating. It was a lot. They haven't put up the penalty yet. I'm assuming it's a five in a game. But a five minute major here trailing five to one. The Falcons are in for a rough second half of this third period. Quick puck movement here for Indiana. One power play goal for Indiana on the game. And they've looked good as we mentioned, five on five. They've looked good five on four. And they've actually looked good four on five. So Indiana's been able to do it in all situations here tonight. This is an extended power play here on the major to Jaros. Good block there. I think that was Sarnowski getting his body in front. Falcons flying all over the place, able to clear it. Excellent job there by the Falcons. Martin made one of those saves. The other two were made by defensemen who blocked that. So everybody's selling out, collapsing play, down Horvath. in front of their own goaltender. Oh, Horvath could not clear it though. Great job to dispossess his guy. This one off the post, solid. And then cleared by Gray. Nice job by Horvath. A forward doing some work defensively. And then Gray, of course, the captain, doing what he does defensively. And now look at this. Horvath has Indiana pinned back in their own end, if only for 10 or 15 seconds. That's a good bit of penalty kill in there on a major penalty for sure. Oh, Zeibel runs his man out of real estate there behind the net. But Indiana, great puck movement. And great looks. Net Net's got off. net got knocked off there. Whistle on the play. Riley Martin, I believe, knocked that off. The Bowling Green goaltender. So the faceoff will be in the Bowling Green end. Offensive zone faceoff for Indiana Hoosiers. They lead it five to one. And it's been an impressive game by him, Chip. Yeah, I'd say so, as the Falcons did, were within one. Oh, here we go, Nitschke. Nitschke on the breakaway, oh! I think the puck just bounced it. Puck oh. jumped over, he actually had trouble gathering it, and it looked like he was gonna be off to the races all alone. Well, yeah. he was off to the races, he was not all alone. There's Horvath, in tight, just missed up high. Now Indiana going the other way. Oh, off the rush, some impressive stick handling moves by Luke Slavin, the freshman winger. He's got that thing on a string. Wow. Stop, drop, shut them down, open up, shop. Indiana all over the Falcons. Basically all game, but certainly here with the man advantage. Oh boy, I thought we had a Michigan yeah, attempt. I was thinking Coming about it. right there, Slavin I see that it's thought happened. about it. Coach said, don't try it, it's five to one. I don't want to see any Michigans. Oh, what a play there. Oh, yeah. 
Horvath that gave his needed. guy a shot. And then Martin took the worst of it. Horvath gave Burke a shot. And Berkey didn't like it. Ran into the goaltender and I think most players on both sides are wanting to get out of here without any more trouble, especially after the trouble Jaros ran yeah, into. Oh man. I mean, you're gonna be hard pressed to find some hard hits like that on the football games tomorrow. Oh yeah, I for mean, sure. Jaros, that was something, boy. For a second, I had to think who BG plays, but. Michigan. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I've hard, heard. There's gonna be some hard hits coming. Bowling Green Falcon football team versus the University of Michigan at the big house. It's gonna be something else. Oh! Oh, what a save! Talk about <laughs> something else. Let me tell you about Riley Martin, boy. The crowd has been down. The bench has been down since it's been five to one. Things got a little stirred up with Jaros's hit, but that save there by Riley Martin has these fans and the players believing like, hey, we got something here. This guy's playing very well. We haven't played good enough in front of him and he's got a couple maybe he would want back. But other than that, I've been impressed with this young freshman goaltender. Oh, what a pass, oh. Papa Iwanu. Oh boy, that puck was already polished up. Someone's gotta shoot it. Great play. Dubendorfer fell down. Payanu made a great play. Dubendorfer just didn't want to shoot it. He wanted to outdo the moves and the dangles. And BG needs shots right now. Not slick moves. High in the offensive zone. Hard, low shots. Drive the net for some rebounds. Oh boy. Nice tip, good save. Tips and rebounds. Indiana has been able to mix in plenty of those with some great backdoor passing. And it's equaled up to five goals here so far. None on the major penalty to Jaros with 30 seconds remaining. Oh, that one the hits net. the side of the net. It was a hot shot chip. The number 11 is a real shooter. They got it back to him. And DiLorenzo, Ethan can really let it rip. Oh, look at this. This is fancy stuff exhausted. here. Less than 10 seconds to go though and some excellent penalty killing, oh! And the stare down of the bench. The two seconds remaining in the major to Jaros. It looked like the Falcons were gonna kill it all off, but a wicked wrist shot from the blue line has eyes, finds its way all the way through. And the Hoosiers have opened it up six to one. Consistency, two goals in the first, two goals in the second, two power play markers here in the third. And opening game for both teams of the 23-24 season. And it looks like Indiana's really in mid-season form. They've been flying since the drop of the puck. It took Bowling Green a while to get going They've played good hockey here, made the score <laughs> two to one in the second period, and really had a good chance you know, of making something happen. But back-to-back -back goals late in the second, opened this one up four to one, and Indiana's had three real good periods here tonight, and Bowling Green's had one good period, and combined, one okay. Combined. Com well, combined. One good period and one combined period. Okay, period. Five minutes in the first, 10 minutes in, in the, the second, second and yeah. five minutes here. Yeah. So Chip's gonna throw it down, guys. You only put in 20 minutes worth of work here tonight. The problem is it's a 60 minute game. But you're right, consistency has been the deal with Indiana. They have 
done everything, and they've done it well all three periods. Not a lot of mistakes here by Indiana. They played a clean game, and uh, Bowling Green's had some good hits. They played the body, Jaros, Crandall, but really didn't make a difference. They were defensive zone hits, and Bowling Green never was able to capitalize and really never intimidated Indiana here tonight. But they have laid down some big hits, that's for sure. Indiana, it's tough to hit the other team when you have the puck, so they haven't thrown a lot of bodies around. But I think their coaching staff's gonna be happy with where they're at. But Bowling Green struggled with this team last year, as you mentioned, so they're not as far away as you might think. And like I said, I thought at two to one, we had a real good game brewing. The hold along the wall didn't get called. Another shot on net, recorded. We mentioned 20 in the first, 17 in the second. Third period, 16 so far for Indiana. So the shooting's been on display for sure, and the numbers can get up there when you get a five minute major. But 20, 17, 16. Those aren't the numbers you want to see defensively if you're Bowling Green. That's giving up way too many shots. And they've blocked a number two, which just means Indiana's shooting more. But Indiana has not really missed the net too often. Their oh, shots have been on mark, and they're driving for rebounds. Oh, here we go. Nice play up the wall there. It looked like he was. Horvath just got dumped behind the net. Gray jumped up in the play defensively. And we got up and down action again as Indiana. Great transition game by them. They turn a two on one one way to a three on one the other way all game long. Oh, nice move here. Yay! Nice move and a heavy shot. Chase, Chase. Nitschke. Nitschke, the Perrysburg product, he powers it through. Goaltender Sammy Billis. He made a great move high in the offensive zone, right at the blue line as he enters. He makes the move, and then he's able to make three quick strides and rips a shot that just leaks through Bills. There's the great move high in the zone. Takes the three strides and gets a lot on the shot. Gets underneath and through Billis to make it a six to two game and make the last 135 exciting. Crowd got jacked up. Let's see about the bench in the next lineup. Let's see what Dubendorfer has here. Slap one towards the net. That got on Billis. Turnover in the neutral zone here. And way to fight through that. Excellent job by Nelson. Got it in deep, and the four check has been light to say the least here for Bowling Green. They haven't been able to get anything going offensively. Off the forecheck, a little bit off the rush. Had a good power play goal. But as far as sustained pressure in the offensive zone, Chip, it hasn't been there tonight for the Falcons. No, it has not. And with under a minute to play, it's two, it's, they did score as many goals this game as they did last year against Indiana, so that's a bright spot. In two games? Yes. And we still got one more tomorrow. Wow, all right, here we go. So that was a big goal by Nitsky right there. And you, you wanna show that you can score against a team. I mean, giving up six, you're not gonna win many games. But if you can score two, or maybe even three, if there's another one out there we didn't get but we could have had, three goals might get you a win, all right? If you're getting the good with, goal with the tending, goaltending that they're, they're getting from. in solid defense. Yes, the problem is we haven't had the solid defense. We haven't had the effort really defensively from our defense or our forwards. Been real sloppy in our own zone and a clean, crisp team like Indiana will make you pay the way they can move the puck and shoot the puck. And they've made Bowling Green play here today, but I think Bowling Green's got some things to you know, look back and be proud of. 
the way they did battle, the way they did play. But uh, they're going to have to play a lot better today or tomorrow than they did today because these two teams will be right back at it tomorrow here in Bowling Green, Slater Family Ice Arena, 3 p.m. September 16th. Come on out and watch some great club hockey. One of the best teams in the nation in Indiana. They made the semifinals last year, the national tournament. And of course, your own Bowling Green Falcons, who will fall here today, six to two. A tough test form in game number one, Jamie, against Indiana. Yeah. Chip, what do you think? I think the Falcons, like we, like I said, played a full 20 minutes. And everything else was dominated by Indiana. Okay, I got you. Now, Indiana, let's wrap this up. How did they play out of the 60 minutes? I thought they were there 45, 50 minutes of this game. Yeah, whenever the Falcons weren't there, Indiana was there. It, it, there wasn't a lot of back and forth, like, who has the momentum. It was clear who had the momentum. Well, Excuse thank me. you for tuning in today. Start off the 23-24 Bowling Green club hockey season. The Bowling Green Falcons will fall 6-2 to two today. Check back in tomorrow. We'll be right back with you. I'm Matt Crandall along with Chip Crennan. And we'll 